Hey. <laughs> First and foremost, um, I'm always flying in and out on these things so I don't get to see a ton of presentations but I catch a whole bunch, kind of little something here and there. I just want to clap up the last one one more time because I thought that was phenomenal. <laughs> I was sitting up there and I was listening. I was trying to, I'm trying to always maximize work so I was sitting there we're working and all, all the sessions were really good. I was actually able to get a bunch in today which made it fun but that was really good. I was really like feeling it. And I was like, this is really good. I was like listening. I was like, I believe in all that shit. I believe in every word that you just spit. Uh, but then you got into the Michael Jordan part. And I was like, fuck Jason. Cause I'm a diehard Knicks fan and I fucking hate Michael Jordan. <laughs> Period. Oh man, that sucked. And I'm a Jets fan, I got Tom Brady. I'm fucking miserable about sports. Anyway, look, I, uh, I want to really take advantage of this format. This is a fairly small group and we're really tight in here and this is just like how I love it. And so to be very honest, I'll spit a little bit here but I'd love to do a little bit of Q&A. I'm not sure how set up they are for it but I don't even need the mics, I'll repeat the questions. So I think you know the beauty of technology is that so many of my current thoughts are on YouTube and Facebook right now and especially if any of you have consumed any of it, I don't need to repeat the themes. I think they're basic. I think I think at some level everybody has touched on it. You know, I think the thing that I'm most interested in is the notion of taking it, right? To me, the most interesting thing to me is the internet. I think we grossly underestimate the internet. You know, the internet itself is ultimately the thing that gives us an opportunity to solve the thing that I think is really in our hearts and we're passionate about. Like, I, I associate so much with so many because you know my story is I was born in Belarus. I came to the U.S. when I was three. I lived in a studio apartment the size of the stage I'm on right now with seven family members. And so no matter what you look like, as we all know, it's about wh- what you live, where you come from. And, and to be very frank, I'll be very, I just, it's, it's interesting. I say this all the time and I'm empathetic that the system doesn't uh, put everybody in the best position to succeed but I'm a product where I think all my struggles um, have been my biggest advantage. And and really, I didn't grow up in an education system or a VC system that rewarded me for being a white male. I grew up in a very interesting path. I was a terrible fucking student. I was a DNF student, so like most immigrants, I didn't use education as my way out. I, I was just a kid that sold shit. Right, like, like I just sold flowers and I, I sold lemonade and, and I'm Jewish and I sang Christmas carols like fucking, it was my last song. <laughs> like, I was, I, I, what I did and really what I would love to leave you here with, like I know the real answer because I've seen it in so many people's eyes, it's self-awareness. My biggest fear in this room is that you're trying to be somebody because you want to be them versus you figure yourself out and put yourself in a position to be that person. I think what you had, when I watched what you were just talking about, like that kid was that kid from the get. He was self-aware, he figured himself out. He was comfortable in that nerdy environment. I was comfortable in high school working every minute, every second and missing every party and like I just, I have not heard a voice in my own head but mine for a very, very, very long time And I think what is most interesting to me right now is if you really pay attention to what's happening, the internet has absolutely done this incredible thing which is there's nobody who's flawed that can sit in between you and the end consumer who's stopping you besides the narrative in your own head. That's a big deal. Like, you know, obviously a lot of people growing up in the music industry, it's just so different now. Like, just fucking go make it. Like producing a song now with technology and putting it on SoundCloud, production and distribution, like that's some shit we couldn't have, you couldn't even imagine. And so I just think, I'll be very honest, I, I think we're living through the greatest time to be a human ever. I, I do, we've got problems everywhere. We've got genocide in the world. We've got nothing but unlimited problems. But I put, thing into, I put things into perspective. Like, I don't know, we got plenty of problems but the Black Plague was worse. Right? We got plenty of problems, but World War II was worst. Like, you know, there's just opportunity because of the internet. Not because we've evolved. I don't put this on us. Like, we've, we've still got plenty of short, but the fact that we have so much opportunity. And so, to me, 
It's basic. Either you're dwelling and looking backwards or you're optimistic and looking forward. The problem is you grew up in an environment, you grew up with parents that put you on the defense or the offense. And that is really the lottery. The lottery really is who's your mom, right? The lottery is who's your best friend. The lot, there's, that's the lottery I think a lot about. And so I look at, I have unlimited white male friends who have tons of fucking money in the bank who fucking lost, who suck, who are in depression because they got the wrong lottery because their mom's broken because her mom was broken and because her dad was broken. And so I am the byproduct against all the odds that I had of parents that fucking dominated. Like my mom is all time, just all time, she is. And so even when I was getting D's and F's and all the other immigrant families were making fun of her because her son wasn't gonna make it because you had to get A's and B's because that's all we knew in the 80s and 90s, she knew who I was, she let me hone my skills. I'd get D's and F's, I'd get punished but I was still allowed to go do my baseball card shows because I was building my skill, building my skill and they taught me work, they taught me work. I didn't see my dad until I was 15 and he made me work in his liquor store even though we slept in the same house every night because he'd left before I woke up and he came after. And so we live in this world now where the fact of the matter is your Instagram account, your YouTube account, your SoundCloud account, the internet. Like the fact that, let's, let, me, let me tell you something that fascinates me because we think a lot about money and opportunity. Let me tell you about an opportunity that I can't get out of my head which is there's a website called Craigslist. There's a section called free where people list shit that they want to get rid of. You go there and you take it and then you list it on Facebook Marketplace and you sell it. And when I think about this, I can't, I, I've been dreaming about this for the last 72 hours by the way. Like I'm, I'm literally doing this selfishly so DRock captures this because this video is going out. Like I, you know, it's crazy to me that the only thing that stops somebody from winning is education and the work ethic, right? I understand that. But education comes in so many different forms. Um, I was on The Breakfast Club the first time and Envy thought I was a motivational speaker, like a bullshit rah-rah, kind of like the secret shit. So he kind of called me out and I was like, fuck. You know, he's like, <laughs> he's like, you know, you're live on the radio. He's like, did it. And he's like, give us something practical. Fuck this mindset shit, right? I'm like, okay, the mindset's the game, but fuck it, I'll give it to you. And I said, go to the dollar store and go to Marshalls, buy, take your phone, scan shit, look it up on eBay, and if it costs $2 in Marshalls and it's selling for $9 on eBay, buy it and sell it. And, it, and that was it, it was kind of like this moment in a six minute radio spot. And then it caught a little, like, then I read all the comments and people are like, eh, 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 bullshit or yes. Then I start getting emails like, yo, I make $500 a week but I'm making 200 now because I'm going to the dollar store and selling it on eBay. And it built in this whole thing and then I named it the 2017 Flip Challenge and we have 10,000 emails of people who've literally went garage sailing to the thrift store and the dollar store and have made 20, 30, 40,000. I started thinking about the long tail, the long tail of all this, right? Like we're in this, especially like in this incubator, like 99% of startups are gonna fail in this generation because we're living through the greatest era of fake entrepreneurship. The amount of fake entrepreneurs that are in this building right now is extraordinary. <laughs> it's true. It's true and, and by the way, please, I, I, I know a lot of you don't know me. I'm not sitting on a high horse like I'm a good entrepreneur and you're not. It's just black and white obvious because it's a bubble because it got cool, right? It got cool and everybody, and, it's, and it doesn't cost anything and there's so much money in the system. There's so much incubators willing to give you money. All my friends for the last 10, 15 years are building all these businesses where it's really not that hard to lose money every month, right? I think you, on your panel you guys said as entrepreneurs you know, lo, you know, losing money and then making money or building, or, I couldn't catch the whole thing because I was distracted. The problem is it takes a lot of talent to build something to then eventually make money. And we spend 99% of our time talking about fucking Slack and Uber and Snapchat and fucking Instagram. We got like 17 companies to talk about and there's 17 fucking companies going out of business every hour, every minute and meanwhile there's more money being pumped into the system and it's just all so obvious right now where this is all going and it's not very pretty because we're lacking self-awareness. What we're doing is we're just riding the waves of what the current conversation is. There's so many people that are gonna be founders of companies 
who would have done incredibly well being number 17 at this startup or number 94 at that company or number 167 at that company but they want to be number one of the Uber of pancakes, right? And like so, and I'm watching this and I'm fascinated by it. Meanwhile, meanwhile, there's so much practicality. Let me tell you what breaks my heart. I get, an e- I, get I read a lot of feedback from my audience. There's, I've gotten two examples in the last three weeks of kids that were making money on retail arbitrage, right? So I think I brought up already the Craigslist to Facebook Marketplace. I think no question, if you said to me, hey, this is a classroom of like 10, of 16 year olds and they have to make money in the next 24 months or bad, bad stuff happens. I, I only default into go buy shit and sell it and run the internet arbitrage become an ex, we'll spend the first three months, I'll teach you everything about Craigslist and eBay and Facebook Marketplace and let go and, and then we'll talk about China and buying shit there and the arbitrage. I would spend an orm, enormous amount of time because the practicality right now in the inefficiency of the internet of buying and selling stuff is extraordinary. In the last three weeks, I've had these kids who you know, have been following my content and they're like, Gary, I want to get your advice and basically both narratives went the exact same way which is, hey, I listened to you, I got good, I started buying stuff, then I hit it big, a bunch of people made a lot of money on the solar eclipse glasses. Like you could literally buy those things for like 16 cents in China on Baidu and then sell it for like $4 a pop on Amazon. People made bank. Like I I know one kid who made $317,000 on a like, on a $3,000 starting point, right? So it's very real to me instead of I'm gonna build some crazy app that's gonna fucking change the world, right? Because it's practical as fuck and and both of them have made real money. One kid's made like 60,000 this year off of like a hundred dollar base, right? Like these are like real money. And both of them took it all and bought crypto. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm, by the way, I believe in blockchain as a technology out my ass. The, the, the part of the story he doesn't know is they bought at 17,000, uh, right? Uh, and they bought, <laughs> And they bought at 17,000 because they read 400 articles that said it was gonna be 34,000. And and by the way, way, Bitcoin could be 400,000. I'm not sure. I don't know. Here's what I'm disappointed in. Short-term thinking. When he goes, who? I'm not mad at him. I'm I'm like, listen, maybe. Long-term. Like, like, I don't know if anybody's money situation. Let me give you something that will really work for you. If you don't have to take it out of Wall Street, put your money into Facebook and Amazon, and I promise you, unless America melts over the next seven to 10 years, you'll do well. There's certain, like, there's certain things that are just so black and white obvious, right? And then everybody else is looking for a lottery ticket. I used an analogy in a podcast I just did with some good guys and it hit me, maybe because I was in Miami and stayed at the Hard Rock Casino fucking hotel which was fucking disgusting. But, <laughs> but a lot of people are treating their business the way you go to a casino. Yeah, you could have one night where you took 5,000 from the casino but why don't you keep going every night and tell me how it works out? They don't build Vegas on us winning. And everybody's treating their business that way right now. Everybody's jumping from trend to trend. They have no foundation of what they're actually doing. They're riding only headlines and they're gonna get exposed. Instead of taking a meaningful step back and doing a lot of thinking about A, how exciting it is to eat shit. You know, the thing that, the thing that works for me that I really wished on everybody else is I love the journey. I love the game. I love the struggle. Do you know why I keep doing new things? Because I like when people clown on me. You know why I came out with a sneaker, my own sneaker, especially growing up in that era? Because I knew people were gonna shit on me thinking I had too big of an ego and audacity and I knew people didn't think it was gonna work. And that's why I did it. Because I wanted that struggle. And then the high of outselling future weekend sneakers combined, that high is the greatest. And the low, that's my L. When you love the game that you're in, you win either way. You either win and you get to talk shit or you lose and your boys get to talk shit and you laugh along with them. The biggest problem right now is insecurity. Everybody's actions are to get shit to close their insecurity. You need a new pair of fucking Supremes because you want to tell people who you are through your Supremes but you're just fucking disguising your weakness. And so I am absolutely obsessed for people to start talking about self-awareness and patience because they will work. Now, it might take 15 years, it might take seven, it may take nine, but if you actually take tried and true things like that, 
during a time where there's this much opportunity, it's not sexy to walk around and say, you buy weird like candles in China and sell them on Amazon and make $7,000 a month, but it works. <laughs> and I've literally sat in rooms and had these one-on-one discussions and kids have chosen the sexier thing because we're playing one big fucking game of optics. We're playing one fucking big game of optics and like, VC is super interesting to me. I did really well, right? Here's my story. I, I made a lot of money selling baseball cards as a kid. My dad worked his fucking face off and saved every dollar. Immigrants have figured it out. It's called make money, buy no dumb shit, save it for 13 years, buy an asset, have the American dream, right? Versus what's going on. By, by the way, new prediction because I've been doing some homework, college debt is gonna take the whole country down. I had no idea, I don't know, you know, I I knew college debt was fucked up. I didn't know the following thing that I've been doing homework on the last three days. This story is real and is being scaled across America right now. You're $237,000 in college debt on some interest that's fucking bonkers. You're making $84,000 a year and banks are lending you a half a million to buy an apartment. So just get ready, 2009's coming all over again. I don't know how long Trump can artificially hold it up, but shit's gonna hit and it's gonna hit hard and here's what's gonna happen. Everybody's gonna blame the colleges because you know Omar who needed a new BMW even though he had 313,000 in debt, it's not gonna blame himself for the BMW, he's gonna, he's gonna blame Babson. And so colleges brand's about to get fucking collapsed just like the banks got shit on including all these opportunities that we know are good alternatives. You know, by the way, 1930, 1940, 1950, vocational skills were hot. Then the propaganda of college came through, which is cool, because it worked for a minute. It just, shit changes. And so we're living through a really, 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 really interesting time because there's so much carnage in the system ready to come. At the same token, it's never been better for all of us because the scale of anything you want to do on the internet is actually real. It's never been more practical to make $100,000 a year talking about fucking the Smurfs. It's truth. Like if you look at the niches, if you actually play out a podcast, a YouTube channel, and an Instagram account and really understand how to build stories like my man just did, day in and day out, consistent, especially if you know what the fuck you're talking about, and have patience, you would be stunned how much money is gonna be for you on the other side of that rainbow. And the only way you'll do it while nothing good is happening is you'll talk about the shit you love the most. You can talk about the 1987 Pistons for a living. That's crazy. By the way, the 87 Pistons really fucked with Jordan, which is why I had to drop it on my man Jason. (laughs) I know you do, man. I got none, fuck. This is why I wanna buy the Jets. I'm like, fuck it, nobody else is gonna do it for me. I'm gonna buy the Jets and win my own Super Bowl. Anyway, then I built my dad's business for him I left at 34, I had no equity in the business. I, had, I didn't save a lot of money because we poured all money back into the business. I grew my dad's business from a three to a $60 million business. I paid back my parents for giving to me. And then I did, I, I did something really smart. I was building a liquor store that my dad owned into a wine e-commerce business and I was using modern technologies and along the way I realized that social media was the second coming of what I saw with Google and blogging and email and so I just understood the pattern recognition. So I was an early investor in Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and obviously as you can imagine that changed the course of my career. But what's really fascinating to me is that the opportunities are way greater than they've ever been because it's scale now. It's just that all we're doing is playing lotto. I'm a bad gambler. Like for example, I never taught myself how to play poker. Like I don't like gambling that much. So when I gamble, I go, I go to fucking, like when I go to a casino, I go to actually like own the casino at the end of the night. Like I'm playing the most high risk shit. Like it's only like roulette, one number, put like fucking $500 on it. Like none of it is basic. It's all like I'm trying to like create memories, right? Which is why I lose all my fucking money. <laughs> That's cool for casinos. That's not cool for life. And that's what people are fucking doing. People are talking about building fucking businesses and apps and things that, and they're not looking at the math. 99% of these companies are gonna go away and it's been good for nine years in the economy. There's money in the system. None of the businesses that are pre-series B are making any money. What do you think happens when they can't raise their next round? You know how many companies are down rounding right now? All of them. 
Like we are not having that conversation. So meanwhile, the propaganda of that or crypto or other things got people pumped, respect, interested. I'm sure there'll be people that win. Meanwhile, <laughs> there's all this practical money. And, and listen, because I grew up pretty ridiculous, I, you know, DNF student in like, like rural New Jersey, so like hunter boys that wanted to shoot you with their you know, shotgun. Then I went to Mount Ida College in Newton Mass, 94% minorities, like kids that wanted to shoot you with different kinds of guns. And so like literally my whole group that I grew up with from you know, first grade through college, I, 98% of my friends make under $100,000 a year. Then I got into the tech world and this, these towns and all my next generation friends, you know, 60% of them have eight and nine and 10 figures. And I look and I look every day and I live in this fucking bizarro world and money is not the variable of happiness. I got boys on two fucking softball teams, fucking working factory job, making 47K a year and fucking happy as shit. I got friends got a buck 50, 150 million in the bank, fucking miserable depression three times a day at the doctors. Like, I'm, I'm just, and so I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, let's take a step back. The internet is at maturity, we're at scale. There's real dollars to be had if you build a practical business and we're pumping people into a casino environment of like winning a lotto ticket and then, okay, fair, if you're building a lotto ticket, that's how you win $50 million companies, $100 million companies, I respect that. My advice over here on the practical side is much more a one, two, three million dollar a year business. But then I just look and I'm like, man, how many people are out there right now who would love to make $212,000 a year and love it? And I'm just struggling with like trying to figure out how to get this noise into the system because it's so real. It's so real. There's so much opportunity and so if I could say anything before I go into q and I, I really would love to make practicality and patience sexy. I really would. Like because that actually changes your life. Like that's actually good. Like if you're sitting here and you're really in like some need of finances, I'm being dead serious with you. You go to Craigslist. It's free. You drive your car, you take the TV, you put it on Facebook, you sell it for $60, you got $60. Like you could, it's, it's just, there's so much of it and like the people that listen to me and are like angry and have dirt under their nails and are ghetto like me that like love it, like love it, they're making like three, four, five, six thousand dollars a month now. Shit adds up. Shit adds up. And so like please, Think about all the cool stuff that's out there, learn. By the way, I know that's what's being pushed down your throat 99.9% of the time, so I don't even speak to that. Let me talk to you about the .01% that's not. The internet is amazing. Like really crazy amazing. Like we can't, we, we take it so for granted, all of us, including the smart ones in the, that have been part of it. We'll look back when we were, me, we're all grossly underestimating what's actually happening. The, the internet is the middleman for everything. It will suffocate everything, all of it. Bookstores and taxi companies they're just first. Everything. What do you think is going to happen to mainstream media? It's all getting suffocated. Suffocated. Retail, suffocated. Personal relationships, suffocated. Real estate, suffocated. It's all getting suffocated, which means you have, you have all the same access as anybody else. You just do. It's just true. And the people in the middle that used to just be there because of establishment, they're going to have to adjust and actually bring value or they're finished and record companies and book publishers and real estate agents, they don't do a whole bunch once they're established. That's the truth. They create distribution, but that's become commoditized. And so you need to understand this truth because when I look around here, people are gonna live for 40, 50, 60 years. Like, what are you doing? Like, we got so much time. I get fearful when people are in their 40s, you know, and they think like, it's a young man's game, like you're gonna be living here for another 70 years, technology's getting good, you're gonna be older than you think. You have so much time and everybody's in such a rush. They're in a rush because they wanna prove something to somebody, either their parents or to their contemporaries. And I'd really like to make it attractive to be like the person that, went, like, listen, I think being a tortoise is cool because you get to win the fucking race, you know? Maybe your mom or dad thinks you're a loser right now, but like, it'd be much better if you won that debate instead of rushing into some dumb shit to make them think you're not a loser quicker. And that's all I see over and over and over again. And I just think that this conversation needs to be put in the system because look, 
there's a big difference between making money and raising money. And we have become way too romanticized about raising capital, which has a need and I believe in it and I'm a VC myself, but everybody's defaulted into it. And let me promise you something, knowing how to make money is always a good skill, always. And I think it's time that we start having a bigger conversation of teaching people that, but everybody's too fancy. You're too fancy. (laughs) It's true, (laughs) people are fancy. Everybody likes to put founder in their Instagram profile like it means something. I could put basketball player in my fucking Instagram account. Doesn't mean I play in the NBA, motherfucker. And so that's the problem right now. We've romanticized something. It's very easy to say. You can't say you're a professional singer because everybody call you out, we can see it. You can't say you're a professional athlete, but you just put that word entrepreneur and co-founder and you are it, but you're not. You're renting that status. There's a big fucking difference between being an entrepreneur and being a successful entrepreneur. And unfortunately, we have confused the lines and it's putting people into really bad, bad habits during an easy time. If you're under 31 in this room, you've never been punched in the mouth professionally. Which to me means you're fucking soft. It's not your fault. You might be able to handle that punch. But you didn't live through 2000 and 2001 and 2008 or not, definitely not 94. And like You haven't been punched in the fucking mouth. And so like you're not, if you're not, if you've been doing something for two years right now, three years, and you're not winning and it's this easy, you better rethink shit now. Yesterday. It means maybe you're number three and you should go find a one. It means maybe you're dreaming and playing lotto and you need to get practical because this has been the easiest fucking time to make money in the last hundred years and if you haven't figured it out, you just might suck. (laughs) I'm serious, it's true. Like, it is cold but honestly, I'd much rather give it to you cold, give you at least the thought to think about it because it's fucking true cold instead of fucking pandering to you and then when you fucking crash and you're really hurting, like all those people that said, rah, rah, you can do it, they're not around. And so please get practical. Please learn how to make money if you're a business person. And so <laughs> that's where I'm at. I'd love to do some Q&A. Thanks for having me. Respect. So everybody that creates a channel can yes. set their own price. Yes. People pay them directly. Yes. We split their revenue with them 50-50. Yep. And you can use crypto. Okay. I want to know, you were early at YouTube. Yep. You want to be early at Reflections. Probably not, but let's, okay. let's talk it through. Gotcha. So the first thing that's interesting is, what's the, what's the revenue share? It's a 50-50 split. So Apple gets 30 cents for every dollar. We split the rest with the content creator. So, so the 70 that's left, you mean? Correct, 35 cents to the creator, 35 cents to us. And so what are you doing to get my 35 cents? So we're incentivizing influencers right now to sign up for the app and be a part of it when we launch at South by Southwest. Right, so you think that you're gonna get seven or eight people that have a little bit of an audience and that they'll be able to then, because they're on it, get other people to jump on. Yeah, so we had 100 users in it from LA, yep. and, uh, some top influencers and some creators that I can't mention right now, but they are influencers. You, Dan, usually the reason, and I've seen a lot of apps like this, um, usually the reason this app scares me is because people underestimate, people love to say, yo, you need to come on my thing, and I've seen this show over and over because you're on YouTube or you're on Facebook or you're on Instagram and they're not paying you shit. You need to come on mine and that's how we're gonna do it, which is the right argument, right? The problem is those platforms have fucking eyeballs. Everybody's a big shot when Instagram's fucking giving you the algorithm and Facebook and giving you the awareness, but when you go over to a new platform and now you're asking your audience for their money and there's nobody actually there, that model has been a real difficult model to happen. There's a very big reason why there is still no platform for content that is working that way 
in a world where influencers have been real now for 13 years. Don't let this current state of Instagram like trick you. Long before Instagram, there's been influencers on YouTube now for 12 years. There's been influencers for a very long time in a lot of places. When you ask people to pay for content, that shit better be real because it's unlimited fucking content out there. And second of all, Everybody thinks that they can move them, but every one of these A-listers over the last five years digitally have done some version of their own app, have been given equity in some new startup that has the same exact business model as you, and none of them have popped because when you try to drive people away for, from a free platform where there's a lot of other people to a place where you have to pay for yours, people get exposed for not meaning that much. So I think the biggest thing you need to, and then of course, you're doing the other move that a lot of people do, which is like if we can get seven or eight people that have a look, have an audience, well maybe that momentum can carry through. The problem is when people start going to a paid place, they start trying to get their audience to come and pay them over here, which starts making them lose their audience in the free place, and that attention was the currency they had in the first place, and so they start losing on both sides. There's a very systematic reason why this model has not worked consistently for the last seven years, including companies that have had 20 to 30 million dollars in funding. So I would just say, please do me a favor and like really, really go do the homework on the 10 to 15 that have died over the last four or five years so you don't make those same mistakes. Because I don't believe that you may not figure it out. I just know it's a lot harder than people think. Because the theory of Facebook and YouTube is fucking you is ridiculous. They're the people that put you on in the first place. You're not paying YouTube and Facebook and Instagram for those hundreds of millions of potential views. So that, you gotta, gotta think about that. Thanks. You got it, brother. Yep. Hey, man. What's up? Uh, quick What's question. Uh, Eugene. Eugene. Um, so I'm a serial entrepreneur. Yes. And then uh, I went into corporate America. Yes. Made a multiple six-figure income. And then I just walked away from that to go back into tech because I, I couldn't breathe, basically. Respect. Um, and so I just started an a ad tech company. Yep. Um, basically, what we do is uh, we do marketing for uh, small businesses. We take their customers and we uh, the hundreds of customers that come in the door every single day and we turn them into a marketing resource. So we get them to promote on social media for discounts and free stuff or you know drive Yelp reviews and things of that nature. Um, so it's built. Our, our entire platform is built on top of the Facebook Messenger application. Um, and so a, a lot of the conversation is all chat by AI, all of that stuff. Understood. Um, so I just wanted to kind of get your viewpoint on that, that process. I like, I like a lot of what I'm hearing. Okay. I like the small business part. I like the practicality of it. Like the long tail in that world has not been exposed. Facebook continues to think about it every day. You know, it's where Google makes its money. The long tail is extremely profitable okay. and a lot of people aren't focusing on it. The only thing I would tell you that made me kind of think that I would, if I was an investor or partner, I'd be like, hey, incentivized actions to help a business usually ultimately break. Mm -hmm. So just keep in mind the psychology of like what happens when you're incentivizing an action, the end consumer eventually understands it's flawed. What Yelp's, you know, anonymous breaks for the same reason. Eventually the data, the content isn't valuable. The fact that everybody just heard that you have a business that takes a customer that comes to a local business, they get a better deal to write a review on Yelp has already made them not like Yelp as much anymore. Yelp was cruising until people started having friends or dating somebody who worked for a PR agency that wrote fake Yelp reviews. When you game the truth, you become vulnerable. So I would be very thoughtful about what you're incentivizing so it doesn't become the vulnerability of what you're building. You stay away from that one vulnerability, every other thing is right. AI Messenger hasn't even started, it will be a huge space. SMBs spend on social media hasn't even started, it will be a huge space. Just give thoughts to the last part. Nice, thank you. You got it. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, what's your name? Good, my name is Victoria Quenuke. Um, oh, I'm the global brand manager at eBay. Awesome. Yeah, and um, I just found it very interesting that at your core, buying and selling yes. is, is who you are. Yes. And um, you know, as part of my job, I'm thinking about the future. I was actually spending some time at the Long, the Long Now Foundation, and they're building a clock to last for 2,000 years. Hmm. And I can't help but, but think, you know, we've evolved. So trade, barter, commerce, e-commerce. You talk about Craigslist, you talk about being practical. How do you think all that's going to evolve in 2,000 years from now? And what are your thoughts of the future? So, first of all, my first thing that ran through my head is like, Victoria, I love you, but I'm not fucking Nostradamus. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing that I thought of. 
Look, I, I think, in the, you know, I think one thing if you study human behavior, when you start getting into hundreds and thousands, you start to see circles, right? So I think technology is getting awfully close to barter. Do you know how much dumb shit everybody in this room right now has in their home and then somebody else has dumb shit that that person wants? Like I'm fascinated by barter uh, in such an interesting way. Um, look, we're always gonna trade. It's always that. You know, back to the woohoo in the audience, like, Crypto's so fun because it's opened up so many different thoughts in my mind. The fact that I can, tra- the fact that you can sell me your home, and we can do that on the blockchain, and all the people in the middle that have nothing to do with anything uh, get cut out, and all those economics go back to us. Energy bills, like you start looking at some of this. Thirty percent of the money you're paying for your energy in your home is for people in the middle that do nothing. So we're getting closer and closer to a world of us, which I think is super fascinating, massively vulnerable for governments which is why I think it's not gonna happen so quickly. I mean, if you really understand blockchain, like China, America, and Russia are not in the business for allowing it to actually succeed. Cause shit get, then we become one team. Like, like you take away currency, bombs are the, thing, the only thing left. Like it gets really kind of, like I don't think people are playing, people are so obsessed with Bitcoin, they're not even on Ethereum, they're not even on blockchain. Like this is real technology. Uh, you're right, I am at my heart, I mean like, Basically, I taught my brother how to be an entrepreneur by garage selling and selling on eBay. Like, e- to my favorite hobby in the world, and I'm not pandering to you right now, you can go watch all the film for the last 10 years. My favorite hobby, like I can't fucking wait to March and April so I can start going garage selling on Saturday morning. I get a bigger high of finding some random little fucking toy for 50 cents at somebody's house and selling it for $6 on eBay than I do closing an $11 million deal for VaynerMedia. And by the way, it's not even close. And that's why I keep doing it. Back to like what you had to do. Because when you can't breathe, what are you gonna suffocate? And so like I think it will continue to evolve. I think it's getting more and more interesting. What I'm really interested in is between your platform, Craigslist, Letgo, Facebook Marketplace, there's ARB, right? There's so like I'm just like it's un, like you don't even have to be like if you want to be efficient and actually make money and not just do it for fun like I do you don't need to leave your room and just buy shit in between the five platforms and find the arbitrage it's crazy it's crazy it's an amazing time for retail like it's just an amazing time you've got big box retailers going out of business but we can like if you ask me what is the one thing that everybody in this room has the best capability to build a $500,000 a year revenue business that gives them $200,000 take home, it is absolutely retail on the internet and it's not even close. And if you really understand how Amazon, Shopify work with those platforms, you can start, I mean, the fact that you can basically create any t-shirt company, use Facebook ads to target any long-term fan, right? Like, make t-shirts that like, I grew up in Chicago in the 90s, right? <laughs> Run it in front of him. He's like, I grew up in Chicago in the 90s. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll buy it. Have a shot. Like it, if you understood how to run Facebook ads, Facebook's so underpriced right now. There's so much inefficiency. That's what I'm speaking to. Facebook ads are so underpriced that I can get in front of every one of you on the three emotional things that you give a shit about with a t-shirt and probably convert one out of every 30 times. The ads are so low, the margin on the t-shirt's so high, I can just run that at scale and make 200,000 a year, no problem. Yet, people are trying to solve problems like build these billion dollar platforms and they're all gonna lose and they're all gonna be going, like if he doesn't make it practical soon when the economy decides to do its thing, he's going back to corporate America. He has to make it profitable. Like, it's just the way it is. So, I don't know, I'm really starting to get passionate about like, let's get practical. Like, I, I know it's fun to create the next Waze. I know it's fun to create the next Instagram. It's just the math's against you. Meanwhile, all this money is sitting in the system and it just feels, and guess what? Back to like some of the themes, like nobody's stopping you. There's no boss, there's nobody who hires you, there's nobody who decides. The internet doesn't give a fuck if you're black, white, girl, alien. The internet's the internet. That's why it's the best. We will never achieve what the internet is gonna do. We will never get good enough. We're too fucking flawed. Unconscious bias is not gonna get fixed anytime soon. The internet doesn't give a fuck. So take advantage, instead of like dwelling or being pumped or whatever the fuck side on things you are, just take fucking advantage. Attention is like real estate, right? The internet is so young, you can still buy 
beachfront property. We weren't around when Manhattan was fucking, some, do you understand a human being bought an acre in Manhattan for $2? You do understand that happened, right? It seems ridiculous, but it happened. And let me just remind you who the biggest spender of Google AdWords was in the first five or six years, Amazon. And that's why they are who they are. And right now you have Instagram influencers, you have Facebook ads, you have real underpriced attention to do anything you want. You have people that are now used to buying e-commerce, like there's so much opportunity. I just think we're looking in the wrong places. You know? Like if, you know what it feels like? It feels like there's like dollars like on the ground, right? And there's just like a huge sign, like a trillion over here. And you're like, <laughs> and then just fall in the pit and there's all this fucking money. <laughs> Fuck. Let's keep it going. Hi, how are you? You can get to the next guy, so he's um, Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, I'm a little nervous. Don't be. But, um, cause you might blast me. I don't wanna end up on YouTube. Uh, like, I don't wanna blast you, blast. I wanna blast you. But, um, Basically, um, my, my, my project is called the Black Bay Area. Basically, we follow black people. Yes. I'm from Oakland, yep. I'm from Bay all day. Let's go. And so for me, it's really passionate because I saw a lot of black people being here, a lot of gentrification happening. Yep. And they wanted to tap into the black community yes. uh, without being a part of that gentrifying mechanism that's being here, being in tech, um, you have the monetary means to buy big million dollar houses and marginalizing people who really need the support and extra help. Understood. Um, so for me, it started out as a joke, like I do Bay Area Bay of the Day and shout out people. <laughs> I also shout out a lot of small local black owned businesses. Yes. Now the way I'm scaling this to be monetizing is that I've been doing like smaller events. Yes. Um, to get my name out there, but we launch, uh, I'm launching a website. It's gonna be theblackbayarea.org. It will be a larger ticketing hub. So if you wanna go on and tap into any black event locally, you'll be able to buy the tickets from me instead of like a ticket master or event, right? You'll just go ahead because I'll be the word on the street. Okay. So I've made those uh, relationships with the promoters and people I that I wanna reach out to tap into. The second aspect is gonna be e-commerce. Now I'm not gonna lay it all out at, all at one time. I I'm it. just walking you through the three things I'm, I'm focused on. Is uh, the second one is e-commerce from smaller merchants. So any, if you're from the Bay, you know there's one thing that you really, really want, then I'll have it on the site, the hottest product that a smaller local vendor will have. I don't know how I'm gonna monetize it for myself, but I know it's important for my community to have the visibility of someone going to a ticket hub that reflects of the community. They can buy items from the community, uh, stuff that's hot that you normally, you don't even have to go to flea market you could live in boston but still buy like ever in jones barbecue sauce mm -hmm. the third one is going to be um real estate so i'm looking at black real estate investors to see um not investors i'm sorry realtors to post listings for homes to do uh roommates for black people who want to room with black people but also um <laughs> no, it's real. There is real life, though. It's real life. Oh, like, I know out here. I'm laughing. So, them laughing. So, I mean, no, people getting two faced and mayonnaise and stuff like that is really, really important. Now, I mean, there's mayonnaise and two faced and things like that that people are having uncomfortable situations. And those cultural conversations can't take place to where they could feel comfortable. So, they are looking for someone who can understand their culture and take, how they take, grew up take, and where they're from. I, I agree. Take a step back. How long have you been doing the media content? Uh, I'm revving up on my seventh month. Um, so, so far, I have had about 6,000 followers on Instagram. Um, I have Devon Franklin. I have <laughs> I Am Sue. I have local notoriety from people just trying to get their their um, word out there about their business because a lot of Instagrams and a lot of things that are showcasing black people are showcasing someone in the front saying, hey, this is my brand. I'm not doing all that. I'm putting the people first. And so that that's my goal is to push their product, push them, but also figure out how I can stay afloat. Because right now I do it from the heart. I don't do it to, like, I don't bet on this and put my life on it. I totally but understand. I'm working it like I would want somebody to work for me, so you know? There's a lot of themes here that excite me and a couple things I think you should think. So first of all, my biggest belief, period, right now, is that everybody in this room and their businesses are a media company first, comma, then you do something. Everybody. Like, every single business you've got in here, no matter what you tell me you do, my man over there with the, with the video platform, he's a media company first, 
comma, he's a business. That's how I actually think the next 20 years play out. That, the, that there will not be a single business, eBay, tomorrow, needs to hire their editor in chief for real, not branded content, not the way most big corporations do it, all the way down to the smallest business idea here, media company first, comma, then you do what you do. That all the upside's there because the media is so underpriced and there's so much awareness. You've naturally and intuitively done that. You, you've started with media. Now you're starting to see there's something popping a little bit and you're like, wait a minute, how am I gonna make some money on this thing, right? Not that you started there, because I'm listening to you. Not that you started there, you're debating whether you're gonna do that, right? You're debating that. You're not sure, maybe you want to. I'm tr- you know, you're, you're still early, it's seven months. You know, let me tell you a couple things. Number one, it's very easy to start allowing, no matter what, too much of the commerce to come. The reason it's working is because it's pure. The church and state that you have to do between this content and what business you want is extremely important. It's why I work. I put out so much content in the business world for free and I have no interest in any of your money. I come out with a book, but I'm asking. I'm not interested. There's no top of the funnel retargeting you. I don't hold something back and be like, now you gotta pay, motherfucker. You know, like, like <laughs> I'm putting it all out and letting the karma of the relationship work out and businesses struggle with that. So much so that I don't monetize my personality, I've always run other businesses, a wine store and an agency that tries to get the big companies, not the audience that I speak to. I think a couple things. Number one, if, if, if I could convince you to not be thinking about this right now for another two years, it would be the first thing I would tell you. Now, you may hate your job or how you pay for your living and so you wanna get over to this as quickly as possible, but I can tell you right now, if you can wait longer and not spend any mind time on that, but triple down on what you do well. So for example, download Anchor, right? And start interviewing these local businesses and start your podcast tomorrow. Become a media company. Take that podcast transcription and use Mechanical Turk or some outsource people or an intern and now you've got a Medium post or a LinkedIn post. Now you got written content. Go ahead. Mike, Mike. It's all right. Oh, so I've already started that. So because I'm not a media person, I come from more of a nonprofit side. Yep. And so I have someone, we have people writing from the community on our Medium blog. Mm -hmm. People look at it. We also, I do a lot of, I'm hosting a free photography show for people in the community. Like I do a lot of things. So it's just the fact that I think I want to hone on to the ticketing because every time I hear people when they come here, especially black people, they're like, what's popping tonight? What's going on? I just want that single website for the ticketing portion to be really important because I think that's a motivating, motivating factor for have people to about, look into have, the multimedia. Two things. It's so early. You're seven months in. And have you debated bringing in a partner? Yeah, but I got trust issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but let me t- let me tell you let me tell you something about your trust issues. If you asked me to, to put if you asked me and I'm listening and we're vibing right now, if you asked me to put my children's health on the line of can you run a successful ticketing internet company, I would bet against you. And so I uh, like I'm being serious with you. Like I think you clearly have some like you told me about your background which is where your passion is, you're clearly hitting a chord. You're only seven months in. Like, that's exactly right. That's what happens when you're onto something. And so it's moving faster than you expected to. You're onto something, which now gets you to start going into a place that you're not as comfortable with. Like you're, you spitting out ticketing and retail, and I heard you, not all right away, but ticketing and retail, and then, you know, what was the third thing you were saying? Real estate. I get it, I get it, but it was a hot fucking mess. Like, like your thought process there was a hot mess. Like I'm telling you, it's a hot fucking piece of shit. <laughs> but your first part is so off the charts right that you need to fucking start interviewing people you do trust and figure out to bring somebody who actually knows how to do that part. The biggest problem is people want to be everything, like, like want to do everything, like we aren't. Like, I couldn't get any entry level job in my own company because I couldn't pass the written test or the math test for the two disciplines, I couldn't. I own the whole fucking thing and the straight facts are I could not work for my own company in an entry level job. That is the truth. That's not me making a joke, that is the fucking facts. 
There are a lot of people that know how to build simple tech. No, first of all, they wouldn't build tech. They would rent the tech over the ticketing platforms and the e-com platforms and the real estate platforms and pay nothing for it. They wouldn't get ripped off by somebody to build it. I get it, but like, you need to do what you do. And what you do is you have a pulse on what the fuck is actually happening and you know how to story tell it. That's where all the leverage is. If you had six million people on that Instagram account, you could sell a lot of t-shirts, a lot of tickets, have a lot of classifieds. You're only seven months in. This thing has just started. Back to the thing I talked about, you're a young, young, young woman. You may look at some 19 year old, I saw some 19 year old earlier, so I'm like, fuck, that's young. You know, but, <laughs> but you are that young. You are that young for you to do something that makes you happy for the rest of your life. If you go into a coma for six years and just focus on what you do, you have a far better chance of being successful than trying to decide that you're gonna be the one navigating the business aspects, especially because I heard you spit the way you thought about it, and you're, you're clearly not very deep into your business mindset yet, which you may later on do, but like, I think you need to either do one of, if you, I'm trying to give you really good advice, you need to do one of two things. Bring in a business partner to drive the business part so you can focus on the content, or stay focused on the content for another 15 months and revisit it later. Those are the those are the options, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm feeling. Okay, I have a team, but it's a routine, so I'm working at I think that's something I'm trying to do. Is that I don't want to do business, but I want to make people happy. I get it. Patience is a strength, and people think it's a weakness. Cool. You're welcome. One more? All right, I'm gonna shoot. Okay. Um, since you're a media mogul, I'll, I'll get I'll get you too. Don't worry. Since you're a media <laughs> mogul who's uh, who's built such a successful company, um, and you're looking back at it from perspective of you know where you are now, what first steps would you take in terms of creating a media entity or uh, a media company? You know, saying you had zero followers or zero funding or really scrapping it out to create a content-driven business? I think, the only, I think the best advice for a content-driven business is to scratch your own itch. Own itch. Like, make the media company, the blog, the Instagram account that you wish existed. Because you know it. You know it, you're one of it. Like, the, we are, un, guys, do you know how big forums still are on the internet? like 1994 technology, because little groups, little neighborhoods, that's why the young woman who was just talking, who's going to the bathroom, I hope, right now, it's like, like that's why it worked, because it was niche, it was niche. People, I'm telling you, man, people try to boil the ocean. Go narrow. Like, you know, like, go narrow. Like, Barstool's winning, because that team made what they wanted. They wanted irreverence, they wanted mixed culture, a different way, like, You've got, that's the only way to break through, because you have to understand, it's an incredible time, but all of us can do it. So it's a supply and demand issue, right? It's an incredible time. It's an incredible time. But everybody can start one. So it's easy and hard, which means to me, go deep as fuck, like go very narrow to what you know, right? and go deep, deep, deep into that. I think that's the place to go. And then use the modern places where there's attention. You start a media company today, you should be voice and social first, not website and email first. Because it's underpriced attention. You can take that attention from Instagram or a podcast and then start a website. I bought Purewell, a women's lifestyle business, back a year ago, and I'm, gonna launch a men's one and it's all gonna be launched on the back of my audience and I built that audience in social and voice and I'm gonna penetrate it to a website and other things as well and so I have it already and so we all have that too. We have what we have. We have our lives, our passions, our interests. I want people to go narrow, real narrow. There's a real long tail business. Really there is. I mean, really there is. So, cool and I wanna do this guy. Well. Thanks so much, Gary. You're actually, welcome. I have to I have to thank you for all the content because I actually I put it on on the streets and it works. Thank but you. my problem is uh, I'm a doctor and a golfer. Yeah, for sure. I'm a okay. class surgeon and pretty good as well. Very and nice. Actually, and I have I'm an angel investor and I have one startup Very uh, nice. as a CEO. Okay. And the problem is about as following your advice. We put everything on the streets. No, we documented everything. And we got a, a good problem because we have uh, our audience. We built audience for my patients. 
And yes. we have audience now for all entrepreneurs guys that are yes. going to make the same, same path. Yes. And now the problem is when people Google my name, they can find both. And maybe some patients like say, hey, I don't want to make a nose job with this guy because they, they don't have full time on just yet. Yes. And the other side. You're looking at it wrong. You know, what do you I mean? I, I, well, because you're looking at the downside, not the upside. Yeah, it, it's why I'm asking you, uh, because it's, it's a, little bit, a little bit new for me, you know? Yeah, uh, I get it. All this audience and all people making, well, sending emails and, and direct on Instagram, oh, I want to be a, a, a business on your field, and actually, I want to make a boobs. Oh, it's, well. it's super interesting to have you here, because I think one of the things I'm trying to figure out is the people that are taking my advice are winning. Yeah, yeah like for it sure. Works. It's, uh, people, I can say, it works. For sure, it works. <laughs> yeah, you can buy these books. Yeah, this works. What, hap that. what happens is they get into the crossroads that happens to you, which is you're trying to do it to build your chiropractor company, your, your, your yogurt shop, your surfing knowledge, and then what's happening is you're getting inundated now with people who want you to teach them how to do that for theirs. For sure. Look, I think that's, to your point, you said it very quickly, it's a good problem. I would definitely tell you not to worry about it, right? Like I, I have so much, if you look at my Instagram content, right? Every day. Thank you. If you, wait, but, yeah. thank you, but let me, let yeah, me finish my say? thought. <laughs> when you look, if you look at my latest post, my latest post on Instagram is me hanging out with Gunna, the up and coming rapper from Atlanta. That is not necessarily what Chase Bank and, and ABI and SAP my clients want to see from me. But the truth is the truth. Yeah. I run the best agency and so they're gonna hire you. If you're great at your craft, there's nobody who's not gonna come to you because you're teaching other people how to build a business. It will all be net positive. Don't allow yourself to look at the negatives of, or perceived negatives or issues. You're, not, you're gonna, it, for every person you lose that says he's not spending all his time on that, you're gonna get three others because you are spending all your time on that. Shit for them. Give it's, a shit for them, sis. It's a, it, life's a net net game. Yeah. Do you understand? Too many people are dwelling on what they're losing without understanding that those same tactics make them win. When I started speaking in 2009, I cursed a lot. And I didn't wear suits. And you know, there's a lot of youngsters in here, this may seem foreign, but that was not super fucking acceptable just eight years ago. And I would get emails, for, then I got a speaking agent, and I would get so many emails. Literally CAA, my agency, would call me once a month and say, if you stop cursing, we can get you four more speaking gigs a month easy. And I would reply consistently for three years, motherfucker, <laughs> if I stop cursing, nobody's gonna listen to me speak because I'm not gonna be me, right? And so, and, I, and guess what, I won. Because the world changed. When you're yourself and you're true, that's why Jason, I really loved what you were talking about. Could you imagine how much the world has evolved? Let me leave you with this as you're thinking about stuff. If you told a parent 12 years ago that when they have a 15 year old daughter, they would rather that 15 year old daughter go into a strange man's car four times a day instead of driving their own car, they would have laughed you out of the room. But if you live in a rich, rich, rich neighborhood and your daughter turns 16, the big new gift is not a new Benzo, the big new gift is unlimited Uber. <laughs> it's, it's right, it's true. Could you imagine if I had a video 15 years ago and say one day in 15 years all of you are gonna send your 15 year old daughters into 43 year old weird Ben's cars 24 hours a day. <laughs> they would have laughed me out of the room. Norms change, norms change. To be very honest, this, you know, especially when I talk to my friends and minorities, and like, urban culture is America's culture now. Like when Maribel and I talk about, like, it's just the truth. Like, like it's just the truth. Like, go sh show me anything that's popular. I'll show you where it started. Atlanta. You know, like, like, it's just, it's so basic. It's so basic. Like literally if you told me my mission as a brander over the next seven years was to get 15 year old white women to buy something, I would start with rappers in Atlanta because that's how it ends up there. And so you can run away from things, you can like look at things. I just think that no matter where you are or what you are, look at hip hop. I'm 42, I grew up with hip hop where guys faked how hard they work because their aunt lived in Oakland and they visited her once a year and they said they were from Oakland but they weren't fucking too short. 
You know what I mean? They were fucking bullshit, but in 1992, 93, 94, you, people remember, you had to make pretend you were hard because there was only one move. Lil Yachty would've got his face beat in in 1992. <laughs> yeah, right? But if you stayed true, it would've come to you because now everything is acceptable. And so everybody's deviating into something. I say put your fucking flag on the ground of who the fuck you are, I have a funny feeling it's gonna come to you, especially with the way the world's working now because what all this Harvey Weinstein and Matt Lauer stuff is, it's all very simple. It's over. The internet, there is no hiding. Everything will be exposed. Do you know how great the world's gonna be in 50 years? Let me make you optimistic. We're taking one step backwards, you know why? We're facing shit we need to face. We've been faking the truth. And so we're taking one big step back and we're dealing with it. It's like, it's gonna be a painful fucking decade. It hasn't even started. We're gonna be dealing with a lot of shit, but let me tell you what our grandkids are gonna be living through. They're gonna be living through a world because of the full exposure of who we are, where everybody realizes everybody's got fucked up shit. Everybody's, there's not a person in here, not one person in here, that doesn't do something that we consider right now a real flaw. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. We as a collective have to go through the pain of that, but when we get on the other side, like when we're all old and we're looking at this, remember this talk, that's pretty egotistical, but try to like, (laughs) try to build on this yourself and forget where it started. Let me go that route. We're gonna be happy, because it's gonna be different. It's gonna be real, real different, because everybody's gonna start accepting people's shortcomings, and we're gonna have very different conversations, and, and things like marriage, and things like money, and sex, and race, like we're gonna have some real conversations over the next 20, 30 years. Get ready, because this isn't gonna stop, and we've, we are just not the animals that we wish we were, and we just have to face that, own it, go through that painful process, but we will be much better people in 50 years from today because of this time, during this era, because the internet is exposing us, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm happy because the truth should win but you've got to go through some shit to get to the other side and that's what we're going to do. That's cool on a holistic level that I'm sure a lot of people looking around here are very passionate about. On your own personal level, do that with yourself as a person and as an entrepreneur and shit will go in a totally different place. I promise you. Own your shortcomings, own your strengths, surround yourself with the other shit and stuff starts to pop. Thank you for having me.